Clark Lagaman is the leader at the helm of Avidon Health, an all-in-one health coaching technology platform that automates personalized health and well-being experiences to create behavior change at scale. We love to learn about the technology and platforms that already exist and have been iterated and optimized to meet the demand of the rapidly growing health coaching industry. This platform, Avidon Health, has hundreds of existing health programs and templates that users can leverage, or you can create your own fully branded program on top of Avidon's platform. We talk to a lot of health coaching platforms with whom we have no financial or professional affiliation, and this one had us particularly wowed. Check it out. Hi, I'm Erin Power. And I'm Laura Rupsis. We're certified health coaches, and this is Health Coach Radio. This podcast is about the art, science, and business of health coaching. We share our insider tips to help you become a better coach and entrepreneur. And we interview expert guests to discover how they've made it in this growing field. It's time for health coaches to make an impact. It's time for Health Coach Radio. Oh my gosh, we're super excited to talk shop about all things health coaching and how health coaches can just run a fabulous business. So we're excited to pick your brain. We're going to so. do it today. We're doing yeah. it. We're going to land this plane. <laughs> all the mysteries will be solved. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. But so can you start our audience off with just give us your backstory? You know, your, you know, how'd you land here? Yeah, got uh, got into healthcare uh, with a, a, a big company, GlaxoSmithKline, and helped them launch a variety of pharmacologic agents. So worked a lot one-on-one -on -one with doctors, understanding how they really educate their patients on getting them to stick to adherence, which is a huge problem, and kind of transformed from there into medical devices, which is the next stage. So we rely on pharmaceutical agents and eventually said, when those agents don't work, we're going to do surgery on you. So I spent a lot of time in the operating room, um, worked a lot with hospital systems and administrators, creating strategies that helped educate people to come in somewhat proactively, but certainly for, for more end-stage care where they needed to take an intervention, a major intervention. And as I sat there and I thought through all the steps that this person had to go through to land here with me that day and the pain that they were going to go through with their families themselves, the stress, I'm like, couldn't there be a better way? Um, there has to be a better way. Can't we just work with them earlier? Like IE prevention? Can we just do that? So two years of me complaining about why can't we just do that? And finally I said, well, I can just do that. So instead of looking for the solution out there that I didn't find, I decided to create a solution I thought would solve that problem. And we started very small with a health coaching practice and we launched it in a physician's uh, office in Northern New Jersey. And it kind of grew from there. We started changing people's lives and those people had other people that knew of them and they brought us to where those people were. And we just started cascading and growing from there and eventually kind of landed to where we are today, which is a business that is designing and creating technologies to empower health coaches to deliver behavior change at scale. So it's a oh, big bar, that. but that's what we're working on. Awesome. Oh, technology. Ooh, okay. Um, Yay. People are excited. People listening are like, okay, you got my attention. Um, I just want to sort of squeak back into your origin story there. When you were at mm -hmm. the hospital, I was really curious because um, I think you mentioned you spend time with hospital administrators mm -hmm. working with yeah. like, how can we get people in for these procedures? Correct. That's an interesting approach. I don't know that I've ever contemplated that going more to, like a, to on, like sort of over over the doctors in a manner of speaking to the actual hospital administration did that did that go well were they were they receptive to some yeah of it was um the physicians were on board with it so certainly I wasn't overstepping it was a oh. collaborative effort the the idea was um and what we were doing so this could be a topic in itself maybe for a different audience but we were we were addressing erectile dysfunction in men oh. and we were doing it through a surgical intervention so this is not a topic that most people say, I want to talk about it in a public forum, and I'm actually ready to do this step because we're talking about surgery. It's a big deal at this point. And physicians struggled to find a very easy way, a meaningful way, and a scalable way. So this will tie into the whole story, a scalable way to educate their patients, to get them there, to get them really to be at that point to make change. And you guys know behavior change. So get them to that stage. And we created strategies that hospitals would implement because we were the manufacturer of the device. So we wanted to sell, 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 sell. And we were trying to implement a strategy that would empower these practices and physicians and communities to take action. And we did it very successfully. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. The reason I kind of um, zeroed in on that is because 
like, I love what you're, what you ended up doing, moving to the preventative side, Mm -hmm. um, working with physicians sort of in this clinical realm. Um, and I always think about hospitals though, because like I have an agent, I have one aging parent left who's more in the, he's more in the hospital realm than he is, you know, he's in the hospital more than he's at the doctor's office, unfortunately, uh, for procedures that he needs to get. He needs to get these, like these procedures and, and, um, he has a, he has a low, he has no (laughs) desire or interest in exploring it. He's scared. He's not getting the time he needs from his doctor at the doctor's office. Yeah. I feel like there's something there about, about getting people who are kind of more entrenched in, in, in the deeper part of the healthcare system, like getting them on board with these big procedures that they need. Yeah. Um, so it's just interesting to me, but there's no, there's no denying the healthcare system is broken and you could look any stage along the way and in the hospital setting, which is very interesting there, are many cases, they're for profit organizations. Mm-hmm. So they want to turn over beds. They want to minimize costs. They want to maximize reimbursable charges. And they're going to re- they're going to negotiate down with the payers. It's like all these things, these mechanisms, and it's a business. Yeah. It, this is a, this is in 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 America, the country that I'm living in. This is a business, and it's a profit. And if you look at a lot of um, public companies that post their financials, and you're like, wow, they are making a lot of money, and wow, I'm spending a lot of money on my healthcare. And couldn't it be better? And I think that's where I love what you guys are doing. I mean, this is why I believe so passionate about health coaching, because I think it bends the curve. I think it looks at healthcare a very different way. And the healthcare system and the healthcare providers currently are aging. And yeah. in the next 10 years, we're going to have massive shortages. And there is a shift that's happening currently. And again, I think coaches are at the, the tip of the sphere right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was having a conversation with someone today uh, interested in enrolling in our course. And he was having, he was just asking more questions about career path and is this the right time? So this is somebody who's in his early sixties looking to build something to retire to. I'm like, awesome. And he's a super smart guy, understands money. And and I said, you know what? I, I came from finance too. And it's always the Holy grail when you can kind of pick the perfect timing of an investment where really the bulk of the risk is behind you. Mm-hmm. And it's really kind of all upside. <laughs> I feel like that's what we're here with health coaching. Yeah. The rest of us, like Aaron and I that have been doing this for 10 plus years, we were the one like early you whacked, on. You we whacked one, that trail over. Yeah, right? yeah. We were duking it out, just telling people, no, 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 this, this is health coaching. You know, yeah. now people kind of at least are familiar with the term. More and more people are like, gosh, that kind of sounds like what I need mm-hmm. once they kind of learn more about it. So I, I kind of think we're health coaching has always been growing. Mm-hmm. And here's what I find interesting. I'm finding the rate of growth is continuing to accelerate, yet the risk and the lack of education and stuff is getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Massive tailwinds. I mean, there's massive market factors that are at play right now that anyone that's considering the, the step that they should take. I mean, for me, it was two years of, of thinking about and doing, and I'm not a health coach, so I want to be clear. Um, uh, but I empower many health coaches and many health coaches have worked for me and worked on my team, but when we were doing this, as you were saying, it just, we were had to educate people. What does health coaching mean? That was the first step of the process. Now it's like, I've heard about this thing. Now, how do I differentiate between the services I might want to get, or how do I really hone in on a specialty that I'm going to provide my patients or my members? And that's where it becomes a lot more exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, so you've made a technology and I I was scrolling through the website before we jumped on and it looks like a pretty cool platform. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just dive in? So you created this, uh, for health coaches. Now, is this, is this sort of like a health coach uses in private practice? Is it meant to be leveraged through medical clinics? Is it all of the above? What's the origin and the idea here? Yeah. So origin was, um, we drink our own Kool-Aid here. It was, we had a problem. And, uh, as we were scaling our business with health coaches that worked for me, I was like, how the hell do we do this thing? (laughs) Like these coaches are awesome. They're making such incredible strides with these people and people are changing their lives. And, you know, we can all share all the stories in the world, but it was really moving the needle, but they were capped out. It was impossible for them to do more. And myself as an, as an operator was thinking, well, they're doing an incredible job, but how do I not, how do I get more out of them? But how do I enable them to make a bigger impact? And that was what we kind of went through and what we were trying to solve. 
And so we're building these tools for internal use. And over time, we realized the business wasn't about us providing coaching necessarily. The business was us in creating tools for coaches to do what they want to do at scale. And so there's a lot of things inside there that um, we have everything from individual coaches using our tool to, in many cases, group coaching. So larger practices that have two, three, 10, 20 coaches that work on their teams. Very cool. So you said you started initially... Uh, in terms of launching this health coaching service inside a practitioner's mm-hmm. office. Correct. I would love to hear more about that because so th- there's lots of health coaches I think that want to go that road. So did you, mm-hmm. did you, was that kind of the low hanging fruit for you because of the connection you fruit. had, right? It exactly versus it. People that are coming. From, so, so health coaches listening that are coming from the healthcare space, this might be kind of the easier path, right? Leverage your network, make it versus, easy. Yeah. yeah. Plus I would love some advice from people that are coming from outside the healthcare space that, because look, I'm hearing, again, my role here at our institute, I'm hearing from people that are within the healthcare industry that just want the heck out, period. I don't want to work within the healthcare system. It just seems so daunting. They're like, I can't possibly, I just need to do something totally different. But then there are others that are like, I've got to be able to help make the system better somehow that Mm -hmm. if we all just leave, it's not going to get better. Yeah. So anyway, that was a hodgepodge of questions in different directions that we can go. But what, what advice do you have for people in terms of, um, so again, coming from the healthcare industry, yeah. looking to move more into this health coaching role within there. And then do you have some advice from people who are outside? What do they need to know? How do they need to speak? How, how do they tap into that kind of a network? Well, let, let's go outside in. So outside in, you probably have a doctor, you probably have someone, there's probably a once removed that would be willing to have a cup of coffee with you. Or maybe go for a walk around the block. Let's talk healthy. Let's let's get moving. Maybe meet at the gym and take a class together. But start those conversations. You should be advocating and publicizing everything you do. And I'm not talking about just going on Facebook or social, but talk about in your communities. Do you go to the gym in the morning? Are you talking about the lifestyle changes that you're creating? Can you inspire a group of people or a community of people to, to really revolve around this idea? And over time, I think which is what happened with us, which is the door started opening and people said, well, I have this problem over here. Can you come talk to my friend of my friend? And then all of a sudden it was like, well, we have a business here. This is kind of cool. How did this happen? And I think that most people always say, I don't have this connection or I'm unaware of doing that. That That is a, an excuse I think that isn't acceptable today for health coaches. 10 years ago, I can say, yeah, you know, there was like, who the hell are health coaches? Today, no, that, that's not okay. Great groups like yourselves are doing the training, the education, getting people stood up. There's a variety of resources out there that people can get rolling with immediately. There's reimbursable codes if they wanted to go that route. There's people paying cash for the services. There's an unlimited number of uh, factors at play that really help people get excited. There's reimbursable codes? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, some of the the more recent codes, they're, I think they're level three right now, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, c- coming on down. So it's, it's, it's maturing. I mean, this is, this is what it comes down to. So the first step is getting them in through CMS. Second step is like, can we use them? And over time, I think it's just going to open up markets and whether practices want to choose that route or continue being cash pay. And you see many physicians are ejecting themselves from the whole reimbursable model and going right to cash pay, but it just creates avenues and different potential for, for coaches to leverage. Um, and then of course, if you're, if you're in the healthcare system, even easier, same approach. Who do you know? People came into healthcare for a reason. Um, not to say I want to be the richest person in the world, but because I actually give a crap and I want to make someone healthier. Over time, we all probably got sour because they're frustrated. But I think most people do want to lean in and to create some behavior change and create change at scale, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really, really outside of the healthcare system. Like I'm as far outside of it as can be because I've never even been sick. Luckily, right? So, but I I feel like I like maybe I can maybe some listeners can relate to this because I have a I have a real interest in getting into it a little bit and working with people who kind of like me were I was pre diabetic so I wasn't not sick but I wasn't you know I was Mm -hmm. subclinically sick I guess which I think you know is is an enormous market I know the CDC has that statistic that eighty eight percent of Americans are um, have metabolic syndrome so it's pretty pretty you know rich market so but like I don't even speak the language of doctors I don't. I don't even have a doctor. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I'm so far out of it. Um, but one thing that you said that I thought was really important to highlight is it's sort of this, this is how I interpret it anyway. It's kind of like, look, just, just go do it. There's almost no excuse not to doctors have literacy about health coaching now. 
So it's not like you're running, you're coming in cold. They, they've heard of it. If they're not using it yet, they're aware of it. And we always, every time we talk to folks like you who, who kind of are in this space, it's, it's like, you've got to pitch it from the perspective of what is this going to offer the practice? How, how is this going to benefit the practice and the doctor and the patients ultimately? Yeah. So just know, confidently know. It's like this idea of confidently knowing and then confidently going because the doctors aren't going to knock your knock on your door. You're going to have to go knock no, on theirs. That is, that is a fact. And also too, many of these, many of these practices now, the reimbursable reimbursement model has changed. So fee for service, that's what it always has been. Meaning you go see someone, you, you, you get paid for you seeing someone. It's very simple transactional service, but pay for performance is what's happening now. So i.e. you come in here and I don't need to see you a dozen times to see you one time, but I create I create health outcomes that matter for you. And now I get a greater share of the money because I do less work to service you. So there is an incentive clearly aligned to getting people healthier and minimizing the amount of burden on a practice, on a healthcare system, on a individual physician himself or herself. So there's there's definitely opportunities there. I would love for you to talk about that more pay for performance. So, so the patient comes in, they have a certain health outcome. This is determined by maybe some testing or something or symptomatology. And then it's like, so the, the, the clinic earns more because they're spinning their wheels less. They're getting more to the direct. Yeah. So usually it's, um, it's, it's like a risk aversion model. So let's just to make it simple. Um, you are my patient. I get paid $100 per year to manage you. If you come in a thousand times or one time, I get paid $100. And that's what many of, of the practices or money, many of the payers and, and CMS and others are leaning towards Medicare uh, and Medicaid because they recognize that to keep people out of the system, to make them make better use of the healthcare system, because there is a shortage that they want to incentivize, grossly incentivize in a good way, positive behavior. So let's get people solving their issues immediately versus coming back a dozen times over. Oh, great. I hadn't heard of that before. I'm really, I'm Canadian, so I don't even know, <laughs> but, but that's interesting. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that makes its way into a lot of government um, run healthcare plans because right. I mean, the NHS in the UK is a disaster mm-hmm. right now um, with the, the old existing model. So, I mean, it's, it's going to take a while to turn the tide and is always bizarrely, I, some for some reason here in the US things team seem to turn first and then people kind of wait and see if we crash and burn <laughs> none of we're successful follow, follow, okay. the, follow the money you usually know? that's in our piece yeah. follow the but money I was, I was talking to somebody who um Aaron was looking at a model like this and encouraging it and he was building a, con- um, a group of practitioners that wanted to move in this model and health coaches were going to be an integral role of putting this into practice and so he had questions about our program and pricing and hey what if I what if I enrolled you know 25 people at a time and blah 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 but so he's right there he's on the cusp and this is kind of more what like um so the idea being so here's here's my question I don't know if you know how this works is, Who's so you've got the cash pay model where maybe you've got a patient that's just paying like a monthly subscription fee. Um, and so it behooves the doctor because they're not charging per visit. They just have a, you know, they just have their annual membership, um, yeah. Membership, yeah. annual or, or monthly membership. But um, are there people at all? Is there any room here with insurance? Because this is what I think Verta Health was doing is if you have a patient who's been diagnosed with, say, type 2 diabetes, the mm-hmm. insurance companies and actuaries know approximately how much money over their lifetime it's going to take to treat this individual. Yeah. And so the organization is is basically saying, well, if we can treat them and reverse it in less money, do we kind of get the keep the difference or is there some sort of like bonus pay? Do you know how this is working within sort of an insurance model versus cash pay? Or is it really kind of only cash pay right now? Where do we see? No, I mean, it's, it's there, there is no rule for it. I mean, there's a lot of different new um, business um, business opportunities, I would call them. And people are looking at how do they price their services? What sort of risk modeling can they bring into their services to de-risk the decision to move forward and have the upside associated with it? And of course, as you mentioned, the actuarials, I mean, this is, this is, it's easy in healthcare, easy and hard that those that have certain comorbidities, there is price, especially in the States, there is a price assigned to that person. Mm -hmm. And it's clearly understood now that 
the way that we're treating people needs to change. And this is where it goes back down to health coaches. They need to have something new and something different or nutrition as a, uh, as a service, or how do we increase physical activity for these patients? And all these things are now being added to the repertoire, but many of these practices, the physicians are, are older. I mean, we have an aging medical community right now, and most of the younger, you know, the younger generation aren't going into healthcare as much as they used to, because they're coming out with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, and they're not able to ever pay down those student loans. It's going to take many years. So it's just changing and shifting, the power, you know, who's out there doing these services. Yeah. That's wild to think about. That's really wild to think about that some of these older doctors that are kind of set in their ways are going to be retiring. Mm -hmm. And then there's this opportunity for maybe a new wave, but there's just nobody. <laughs> it's like, there's just no people or very few, not enough. So yeah. I'm, I'm, what I'm picking up is that it's ripe for health coaching. Let's go. <laughs> it's an exciting time to be a health coach. Scientists are uncovering the mysteries of the human microbiome. We're now gaining clarity into complex gut health issues we didn't even know about a decade ago. This means it's also a great time to become a gut health expert. Primal Health Coach Institute's Human Intestinal Microbiome in Health and Disease Specialist Certification is for health coaches who want to help people heal the root problems of many of their health symptoms and conditions. A recent survey spanning 73,000 people across 33 countries found that nearly 40% of adults suffer from a gastrointestinal disorder. As an expert in gut health, you can offer unique programs and services to clients looking to manage or reverse a diagnosis such as an autoimmune disease, irritable bowel syndrome, or type 2 diabetes, or those who wish to improve their overall health. Gut health expert, cardiologist, and best-selling author Dr. William Davis teaches you everything you need to know about the human microbiome including coaching tips to give you the confidence and credibility to support your clients and help them heal their guts, sleep better, gain more energy, and enjoy stronger immunity, balanced mood, smoother skin, and more. Find out more about how to become a gut health expert. Visit primalhealthcoach.com. So when I think about health coaching, I think of it as the personal relationship I have with the client. And I love that relationship. I'm such a geek for one-on-one -on -one coaching, yeah. but it's a log. There's a log jam built into that model, hundred yeah. percent. So, I see the benefit of automating this through software. So maybe take us through how you see somebody like me, who's a one-on-one -on -one coach in private practice, how I can use technology to make my life and my life easier, but also greater outcomes for my clients. Yeah, and and more more of a personalized service for your your clients as well. Mm -hmm. So your your perspective is my perspective. One-on-one, -on -one, incredible, best, the connections, the relationships, and also the outcomes are going to be better than anything else you could provide. But you're not going to work 24 hours a day. <laughs> so it just doesn't exist. And nor do your clients want to hear from you 24 hours a day. So they want to live. So what we looked at is how can we take that one-on-one -on -one experience and extend that, um, that personalized experience, but extend it out over the course of maybe days, weeks, or even months and doing it through a set of automations. So let's just say you you conclude your session and there's some uh, action items needed, whether it be educational content or you want them to go and work on some sort of physical activity or a nutritional activity. You can pull from off the shelf templates that basically walk that client through that experience because the probability is, you, I know you do personalized coaching, but the probability maybe 80% is the same, 20% is different. Yes. So uh, yeah. pull off the shelf, the 80%, put in your 20% and then you can with a click of a button, at least the way we've designed it, the click of a button, you can have sets of emails, sets of text messages, reminders that go out to your client and also reminders that go out to you to do certain activities over the course of the next 30 or 60 or 90 days. So it just takes the guesswork out of it. So what we always looked at is how do we remove admin from our coaches? And what we learned is that most people are doing the same activities, clicking the same kind of buttons or grabbing the same sort of resources. Yeah. And we want to pull it out build automations around it, and then just let our coaches do what they do great, which is coach, <laughs> work with people, and then press a button and then move on from that. Right. So that's one, one tangible example. Um, I, I can give you one other one I think is good because most people never consider this. So you have your, your, your clients. They're awesome. But guess what? They miss appointments. It happens. Life happens. So most times it's like you do the phone call. They're not there. You do an email, check in with them. What we did on our team is you click a button and all that happens for you. Hey, what happened? You missed the call. 
can you click over here to reschedule? If they don't do anything within two days, another message goes out to them. All that's done. And then after seven days, our coaches are alerted. Hey, call Clark, for example. He didn't book his next session. So it just mm-hmm. removes all those activities and just takes it into one single click. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah, that's nice. I have about five different tools because I, uh, so th- this is where I think it's my, my pet talk to coaches listening. And I always tell our students this too. Like when I got started eight or nine years ago, I had a CMS, I have my website, I have my, my email tool, my learning management tool, my course platform. I have all these platforms and they don't really talk to each other. I could do it through Zapier, but I'm, I don't want to. <laughs> so it's all very, <laughs> it's automated ish. It's I'm, I'm the automation basically. Yeah. Um, so whenever I hear about a a tool that does all of this and everything. And it's the number six. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. No, it's the, but I I say to coaches that are starting out, like I would start with the technology right out the gate, if, if Mm -hmm. at all possible. And the thing is this technology is not hard. Like none of these is, you don't have to be a super techie person to understand how to build these things. I I really don't believe, you know, I just, I think these things are built for the non-techie health entrepreneur that just wants to go to business. One thing that you mentioned that I, I think is often overlooked when co- when coaches are planning their programming is it has to be convenient for the client too. Mm-hmm. A lot of times I feel that coaches build up these very programs where it's like, we're going to have, you know, a 30 minute session every morning meditation. Then we're going to have a call and then we're going to, I'm going to send yeah. some recipes and it's going to be this text message support. And it's like, I, your client has a life and they just yeah. kind of want to have this r- routine check-in with you that fits. Um, so I love that you brought that forward. Um, so the software sounds incredible, um, from the perspective of program, like building a program, because for example, my hodgepodge is I have an online course Mm -hmm. in a learning management system. I have an email automation sequence in my email. So, you know, I do all the communication through my Gmail. Like it's, it's just crazy that these things have to kind of work together. Uh, and there is no clicking up a button to get anything. It's many clicks, many buttons. Yeah, and even I mean, even from that, like depending on what environment a coach is working in, is it HIPAA compliant? Are you GDPR compliant? What sort of um and we could go alphabet soup here. I won't, I won't, but there's a lot of things in there that we have to consider depending upon where we're working within. And all of what you talked about before is is just the sustainability of the program. Like you, you've done it, you've mastered it. So for you, those 10 clicks or three clicks, whatever you're taking, maybe it's not that bad. But as you said, a new coach coming in, they're like, whoa, this is a lot to handle. Um, but I, I imagine probably over time, you can probably derive more value from some sort of cons- consolidation as well, because you would just get more time with your your clients. It just makes it easier and just more efficient. If if the service provider, i.e. someone like us, can deliver on their, on their, their mission, um, and that's what it comes down to. So it depends on what coaches are looking for. Like, for us, we don't do billing. That's not what our business is about. Our business is around enabling coaches to reduce their administrative burden and scale up practices. If that's what you're looking to do, then I would argue to say we are better than anyone else out there. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't see anyone doing what we're doing, but if you want to do something where it's billing, it's like, let me tell you about three other people that do that and not us. Yeah. I mean, we've looked at a lot of tools, right? And mm-hmm. And so it's going to depend on the, on the coach, to your perspective, Correct. to your point. It's like, if you want, if you need a program with billing in it, that's not us. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's lots and lots of um, platforms out there that have tools that I will never use with my client. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just not going to. And so it's nice to find one. It's, it's really nice to be able to shop around for the one that has the, um, the functions that really seem important to you. But I think just to close the loop on my pep talk to new coaches is like, absolutely start out with whatever level of technology in the very, very, very beginning that it feels right. It could just be a bunch of PDF eBooks that you're emailing from your Gmail account, and that's fine. But I would front burner automation and systematizing. I wouldn't. I wouldn't wait because then it's um, it's a bit messy. Like I, whenever I do make the leap to some more complete tool, it's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna hurt. The pain, the pain will be worth it. Don't be hurting. It will. It will. Um, and also to a lot of for your for your, these new health coaches and anyone listening. A lot of tools have templates you can leverage. So if you came over, worked with us, you can pull something off the shelf that will get you 80% of the way there. It's going to make your life so much easier. And then you can add on top of that and you actually have a value. The one thing we didn't talk about to pat ourselves in the back is I think of even the diversity of people and clients you're working with. And for us and what we've done for our clients is that we translate anything that uh, uh, our coaches load. So not just our material, but anything our coaches load into our platform into 14 languages. 
So now you have this expansive library translated of all your materials, including if you load videos into our system, we will do closed captioning for you. What? In 14 languages. What? Yes. <laughs> Get out of town. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so walk us through this. So uh, uh, you've got a, a coach who's ready to invest in, you know, a, a soft, management yeah. system, a software yeah. package. Okay. So I'm ready. I've had a few clients under my belt. I can't do this like low tech thing anymore. I've got to get my act together. So they're taking a look at your program. They decide they want to jump in. So they they enroll with you. They they build their own program on your platform, correct? They could they could take something off the shelf. So we have everything from right. uh, smoke and cessation programs, alcohol programs, weight loss, nutrition. I mean, a lot of our 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 origin. Um, you heard my story, but on my story, which I didn't include, is that we acquired a company. Um, about two years ago, we acquired a cognitive behavioral training company that specialized in digital courses. So you can see the compliment here. I'm like, how do I scale my team up? Oh, they have these incredible courses. So we took these courses and we basically modularized them in which our coaches and other coaches can take pieces of them and construct their own experiences. But there are courses that can be leveraged right off the bat that can be personalized with your branding and your feel and all that stuff. But it just, you could press a button and you could go immediately from day one. Wow. Yeah. And you know where I think a lot of that stuff is helpful too? Because I mean, a lot of the people that graduate from our program have a specialized specialized philosophy. They may want to take people through, but they may not specialize in smoking cessation, for example, or they may not specialize in a particular behavior necessarily that they're like, I don't. I wouldn't know how to add that to my program. Mm. So it sounds to me, I mean, is that something that can work? So they've got their program, but now they've got someone who, in addition to, um, you know, needing to change their food or move or what have you, we're adding smoking as another variable yeah. here that I might not feel confident in as a coach. Yeah. F- fill out, fill out the sides. I mean, just even imagine this, imagine the primal method. So every time one of your coaches graduate, they have a platform loaded with the materials that you train them on, the pre-build out programs that they can now have access to. You just give them, um, you advance them on the starting line a little bit, make it a little bit easier for them. And that's what I think this is. It's not meant to replace the expertise of a coach. It's meant to enhance it and to remove some of the administrative burden. So you don't need to take what we have, but it's a lot easier than starting from nothing. Um, yeah. Especially when you have some that's that's highly efficacious, that's been proven to work, and it's also ready for you to go from day one. And you don't need to become an expert now in smoking cessation or tobacco or alcohol, because that is something you need to understand very well. But you can understand and recognize that your client has that need. Mm-hmm. And then you can use this program and also do all the follow-ups that you're currently doing with them. But knowing that you have an educational resource that's going to deliver for you is going to be incredibly valuable to just minimize the, the, the concern that the coach may have. Yeah. I think it's an awesome idea. So like, just to go back to Laura's example, like if I'm taking a client through my, my program and they say, and you know, gosh, I really need to cut back on my drinking. Well, I don't have a program for that, yeah. but there is one. And this is what I thing that I tell the coaches that I teach in my, in our advanced coaching course is like, if you know how to coach, you can coach anyone through anything, (laughs) even if you don't know anything about it, because the coaching conversation is independent of your teacherly knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a relationship that, so, so it's almost like you have these additional resources that are like, Oh, you want to cut back on your drinking? I got something for you. Let's go. Let's add this in. Right. It's pretty cool. Versus looking for that. I mean, that's the other thing too. You're going to hang every, like, I need to find something because I want to help them on their journey. You can't tell them what to do, Mm -hmm. but you want to guide them on their experience and you want to be a resource. So you're going to spend time when you hang up that call and you're going to do work. It's just the nature of health coaches. I want to take that away from you in a good way, because I want you just to worry about working with the people one-on-one, not having to worry about all the administrative. That's admin burden that you're not thinking about. You're doing it when you're watching TV, but it's just taking the time from you having for yourself. Yeah. So logistically, very into the weeds, uh, because you you mentioned a tobacco one, an alcohol one. Are there other... What other, like just a few more examples of these? Yeah, uh, substance use disorder, sleep issues, of course, Mm -hmm. nutrition and physical activity are big ones as well. Stress, another big one. So really, I mean, we looked at 80% of the chronic healthcare, the risks and behaviors that account for 80% of the chronic healthcare costs out there. So all those big pillars are addressed. Okay. I love that. Two more, two more into the weeds questions, which is there's on my list. So you mentioned that it's it's brandable with the coach's Correct. branding. Yeah. Is that is that easy? Yeah. You, I mean, okay. less than five minutes they could do that. Okay, cool. Um, and then is there a client facing app? Yes. Um, not an app, I should say. So there is a client facing experience that's 
web accessible and also mobile accessible, but we don't do, we've, we've moved away from apps and we've kind of seen that most clients don't want to download something else. They just want to make it easy. So okay. in our experience, it'd be, you can deliver something via text or via email. They click and they have that full enriched experience open up on their phone. We found that to be the best way to deliver something for our, uh, our coaches and their clients. I agree with that. To be honest with you, like, I don't want to make a disparaging comment, but personally, as a consumer, I'm probably not going to open your app. <laughs> Please put a link in an email because I triage everything through my inbox. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cool. Okay. I'm done yeah. with my the week's question. Tell me more about this multiple language thing, because we get quite a few people. Look, I mean, our, our primary founder, Mark Sisson has a global audience and we've got students from all over the world. And when they um, gain access to our content to be able to deliver to clients, it's, hey, can I translate this? Mm -hmm. Or do you have this in Spanish or Portuguese or French or, you know, so it sounds to me, so how does that work? So they upload their content. Mm -hmm. It's like automatically mm -hmm. translated. Do they have to check a box? Tell us how that Yeah, works. no, it's, it's automatically. So um, we uh, leverage an AI driven translation. So what happens is when you load the content into our system, it's it's loaded in a CMS, a, a content management system, which is what we have underneath the umbrella. You know, all the non-sexy things we're talking about right now. Um, <laughs> but when that happens, the coach doesn't see anything, but it's loaded, it hits the servers. We translate that thing instantly. And what happens is when participants come on and they start their experience, they select, what do I want to learn in? What language am I best going to respond to and win? They click their language, then everything happens for them. The whole experience changes into the language. The video is closed captioning, emails are sent out, all the communications, it's there for them now. It just makes it, again, we talk about removing barriers and hurdles. Mostly we talked about the coaches. This was one we did for the client because mm -hmm. there's something we learned is that people are individuals. They may not speak English as their first language, and we want to make sure it's ex as accessible as possible for them to take action. So those were all like the big ahas that we've experienced on our journey. That's amazing. crazy. That is, that is very unique. That is very unique. I can't even think it's 14 <laughs> languages. My part of. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So tell us how, so, so how does this all work? So, I, so I'm using this platform. I'm the coach and I've got a new client. Yep. How does it work getting the client onboarded? Is there something people click and fill out? Does the coach manually enter someone and something gets submitted? And can you tell us a little bit about the... Yeah, the onboarding experience. So it, yeah. it really, as you know, in coaching, there's not one size that fits all. <laughs> so um, we've kind of addressed the three primary ones. So one, let's talk about, you just landed a huge client. First off, go celebrate, come back tomorrow. So that's the <laughs> first thing. Um, but usually with those large clients, they have an eligibility file or they have some database they want to say all these people are eligible for coaching. So when we take that, we could bring that information into our system and then all the magic happens on behalf of the coach. That's one model. Second one is the coach, it meets someone, they're talking, they want to onboard them. They would basically type in the person's information and then basically press a button and then the experience starts from there. The other way is maybe the coach wants to broadcast either on social or on email or through whatever method they choose. Maybe it's a QR code on some sort of uh, flyer that they post all around town. All great ideas for you coaches out there. So you guys should be using these things. Exhaust all options to get your clients onboarded. But with that, then the uh, client would register themselves and it would load into that coach's dashboard and say, Clark just registered. What action do you want to take? So you could build all these automations that can do it for you, or of course you can manually intervene as as needed. And then that client gets their 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 dashboard with to dos, a wellness vision, short and long term goals, all of the coaching content in there, all loaded for them to click the button, which is cool. And the coach has a, a similar experience where they can track activities and see how they're doing. And we haven't even got into the real weeds, which is connected devices and wearables, like things like that we do as well, where coaches can see that and recognize that, wow, Erin um, hasn't done her walking like she said she would, or Laura's not sleeping like she should be. And she had a sleeping problem. So all that is connected into a dashboard for the coaches. Cool. Yeah. So that onboarding um, walkthrough is great. So the first example you mentioned is if you landed a big client, this is probably like a physician's office and you have now a cluster of clients, right? Is it, or, or an employer too. We, right. we see that a lot in the States too. So yeah. Yeah. Corporate oh, wellness. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, interesting. Um, but the, the last example you gave, that's sort of the model that I think a lot of um, private practice one-on-one coaches is doing. Yeah. And so, 
so your, your, your software doesn't have billing, but this is easy. It's like, okay, you know, Sally, I did the discovery call with her. We're a fit. She's a, she's a, yes, I can send mm-hmm. her the billing through my, my merchant yeah. account. And here's the, here's the link to set your, set up your profile. She clicks it and then boom, the automation is off. Everything happens. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, you think of the receipt. So they process on the merchant services. Congratulations. Here's your receipt. Click here to get started. Yeah. And when they get started, you, you, we look at getting started two ways pretty much is, is one onboard answer questions. Great. So now the coach is prepared to really address something instantaneously that the, the client has or have a call. So you also can bring that, uh, that client right to a live coaching session with you. And we do integrate with some calendaring systems, but you know we make it very easy that the client can take action immediately, either a fully digital experience or actually booking a, a live session with you. Wow. Oh, so is there um is there like a video chat option built in, or is that what you mean? Or no, it just mean- it's more just the scheduling. Yeah, the scheduling piece for like integrating with the calendar and just making sure. I mean, if you're using Zoom or whatever you're you're leveraging, you can bring that into the system. But yeah. Oh. Amazing. Yeah, it sounds super flexible. Um, so, who you nowhere in your background did it indicate you were a technology or developer or what what have you? So, how did how did you have did you have someone build this? Did you acquire something and, and tinker with it? Like, what were the foundations of like we need technology and, and yeah, um, I'm I'm very blessed to have a great team. So, a lot of these words I'm sharing today are just because I've learned a lot from a lot of really impressive people from both from our coaches, our clinical team, and also our technology team. So part of our experience as we were expanding our business and growing, we uh, came across some really talented individuals. They joined the company and they are some of the brains behind how we do things technologically speaking, operationally speaking, or even of course, clinically speaking. So yeah, not, not me. I'm just more the the operator, um, I get the opportunity to have these great calls, which is fun and exciting. And sometimes I get the praise and sometimes I get the booze, but it's great. My team deserves all the praise and none of the booze. I take the booze just on my own. I think it's, I think this is an interesting model though. You have to have subject matter experts from many different yeah. categories to create a tool that's actually usable. We, we can't have, we can't have, I'm sorry, like we can't have software engineers making a health coaching platform and because they- You're completely under- right. We, we, yeah. This has been built by coaches and this is the difference. Our, our coaches come in, they, they don't know what they want. They come in with a problem and that's what's fun. Coaches come in all the times with problems. I need to figure out how to do this. And we go, okay, do you really want to do this? Or do you want to do this, this, and that and done for you? And we start really having these sessions that happen all the time. And then we say, cool, we really landed on something that is a differentiator here. And then the product team and the engineers build it which is great. Then they QA it. They bring it through the process, make sure it actually works. We do the design as well to make sure it looks the way it should look. And we bring it into the product and we let our coaches and some of our team members use it first. And then we bring it out to our clients. So we always have like this little testing that happens to make sure we're actually delivering value for our clients and our clients, we coaches, coaching teams. When I say clients, not the actual members, the participants, the client participants. Yeah. Do you have a general kind of line of sight on what kind of coaches are seeking your pl- your type of platform specifically? Is there a certain stage of business they're in when they're ready to invest in something like this? Um, is it scalable, you know, in terms of, hey, there's an introductory like baseline, I'm a new coach kind of a level and I can yep. graduate up into stuff more. I mean, is it can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. So we've always been enterprise. That was what we spent our time on. So this is always big 10, 20, 30 coaches or working with 50,000 people. That's where we were. And we said, these are unbelievable resources and shame on us for not finding a way to get it to more people. And we kind of kept going back, blah, 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 you know, and where we are today is that we've brought in functionality to make it very easy and convenient to onboard as like an end of one. And that's what our business is now, you know, kind of striving for is expanding our tools to empower that solo coach. But our sweet spot, candidly, is teams. Um, if you have a couple coaches, we do extremely well because there's a lot of there's there's new challenges that you have when you get that second or third coach that you're all working together. There's some overlap. It becomes very complex, and I think that's where you get a lot of value from our services and the technology because then be, you're you're really trying to scale at that point. If you have five or ten clients. You're 
I mean, maybe you want to scale more, but you just need to worry about getting more clients at that point. I mean, give value, create outcomes, but find more people and grow your business. And then um, you probably could get a lot more return for making the investment. It's not even a huge financial investment, but it's just a time investment to learn how do you want to operate your business maybe a little differently by leveraging tools like ours, because you can do everything on Excel document or Gmail. You don't need anything. Again, remove all the objections. There's no reason why you shouldn't start today knock on all the doors, talk to other people and use a pen and paper because that's the way we started. PDFs, that's the way it worked. Mm -hmm. We don't need to overcomplicate things here. Google Docs. Exactly. I I just think it's so exciting to be at this point in time in health coaching where we're talking about having a collective of health coaches working as a team, servicing thousands of clients, like, dang, like, look at us go, right? Mm -hmm. But also if, if, kind of circling back to what if you wanted to hook up with a practitioner, a physician, a physician's office, if you have, if you come in with a tool like this, like that's almost, that's a selling point to the physician too. It's like, I've got this platform and this team of coaches and we can take on your entire patient roster tomorrow kind mm-hmm. of thing. Right. It's, yeah. it's you, pretty neat leverage point. You de-risk the relationship. Um, and some of the alphabet soup I talked about before, but there's also accessibility compliant that we do. So screen readers, so addresses in an older population, our content is written in sixth or eighth grade level. So it's very accessible. So there's a lot of things that we've done along the way that now gives the coach the ability to walk into with a high degree of confidence that I can service your needs and I can do it in a way that's compliant because that's important. And many times when you start hearing HIPAA and and people like, "Uh, I don't know what to do. And then mm-hmm. they stop and then they never get going. And that's to me is a missed opportunity to really help empower these practices and also help make a difference. Yeah. Just yeah. on the off chance, there is somebody who doesn't understand what that means. Um, because we we do hear from, from folks who make these tools that say, oh, and ours is HIPAA compliant. It's like, oh, well, that's good. That's good. But what, like what? Is this like encrypted forms kind of thing? Or what does it mean? Yeah. So, so basically um, HIPAA is all around the privacy of patients. So it means that some people should see, read, and be able to view information on patients and some people should not. So that you need to have different um, authentications that allow coaches to see some things and not see other things. And also to share some things in an email that would be unsecure and not share other things. So providing that guidance in the, in, in the infrastructure to minimize the likelihood that a coach will do something that they shouldn't do. And, and HIPAA is, is, a, is a rule system. So there's things you should and shouldn't do, should and shouldn't do, but it's also forgiving. So unintentionally, if you're doing things, you're not going to get hit with a million dollar fine. That's not going to happen. People that people, especially coaches, they're not looking to do something nefariously, but they may just make mistakes, but you want to minimize those mistakes because if you get into a room and you're trying to close a deal and secure a practice or or another opportunity, if you can't answer those questions, you probably shouldn't be servicing that client. And that's okay. And maybe you're not ready for that now. Maybe just work in a um, a gym or get relationships that refer to you, things of that nature. Even that, you might have to still worry about the health information that you're extracting from Locking. these individuals. Correct. There's, a, there's risk here. Um, I would say low risk, but there is still risk that coaches should be aware of. Yeah. So coaches, coaches listening that are just running an independent practice, you general well, you know, and if you're not collecting medical data, this really doesn't apply Correct. to us as health coaches. But look, we've, I've said this on the last couple of podcasts, like I, I definitely believe that the rate of growth, the, the, the speed of the increase of growth, the trajectory in health coaching is going to be in healthcare and corporate wellness. Um, and if so, to the point where we actually put our money where our mouth is, we actually developed a whole course for health coaches that want to work in a medical practice. And this is where this is super duper relevant, guys. And you're going to need to understand what it means and understand what you really need to be careful of and having a system that kind of does that for you. So to your point, you never did anything nefariously, but you just sort of left some some data or information unprotected. It, just cover your butt, you know, and, and a platform that is HIPAA compliant would be really important. So coaches listening, if that's the direction you want to go, be aware of that when you're picking a platform. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you were talking about, this is really kind of built for teams. You know, I I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see coaches sort of building consortiums almost, you know, where you um, coaches can work together under a group practice, so to speak, where you share like cost of liability, you share cost of marketing, you share cost of yeah. space and all of these things, because 
you know, look for a typical coach that um, doesn't have aspirations to be making millions of dollars. You just want to make a great full-time living doing what you love. Um, that might not be necessary, but but for many people, being able to spread the risk and being able to spread the cost and be able to to grow uh, is enormous. And it sounds to me like a platform like this might help facilitate that kind of an yeah. approach as well. Makes it easy. And also spread the love. Working mm-hmm. by yourself is hard. And as much as you may love doing it, having a teammate or a trusted partner that you can share with and learn from it's going to make it easier because there's going to be tough days and tough days you have to pick yourself up on. There's been many days on my journey that I was just down and it was hard and I didn't have someone I could rely on and someone I couldn't share with, but to have someone else going through a similar experience that cares as much as I do around solving these problems, it's probably going to put you in a better place to win. So uh, one thing my team hears me say, one plus one does not equals two, one plus one equals three. So find that other person that's doing something not in a non-competitive market that you can both expand and create opportunities for each other. Maybe you uh, are a special specialist in nutrition. Someone is a specialist in physical activity. Well, that's cross-selling right now. Now you have an opportunity to potentially get more of your client's um, mind share because mm-hmm. you're an expert in multiple things and you can really diversify your offering. Oh yeah. I'm seeing that a lot. So around here, there um kind of a CrossFit junkie. I owned a gym for a number of years in, in Illinois and I found one down here. And what I loved about what they did is they were, they had, they were a CrossFit gym, but they also offered physical therapy and nutrition. Um, and so they, they run all that out of one business. And then I just coincidentally, uh, a friend of mine became a physical therapist at another location. So this, the, um, main owner is actually a psychologist hmm. who specializes in trauma and addiction of all things. She got is CrossFit level one and two and strength training, a bunch of other stuff. She has a gym, but she also has, um, someone who does like cryotherapy and she's got a nutrition person, physical therapist. And so they, they're all independent, but they all work together too, and kind of share space. And so I I just think we're going to see a lot more of that because we, we need more sort of decentralized areas of care that aren't run from the top down because clearly that doesn't work. And I'm starting to see more and more of this stuff where people are kind of leaving that larger corporate health entity, starting their own businesses and consolidating strengths and specialties and running great businesses together. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that that continues. I give another thought for your listeners is that Mm -hmm. let's not kid ourselves. Our clients, your clients are spending money outside of you. Mm -hmm. They're spending money to improve their health and wellness outside of the services you provide. Those services may not be as efficacious or proven, and they're certainly not connected to the the services and the solutions you're providing. For me, that's a missed opportunity. It's a missed opportunity to be a single source or a better resource for your clients. You need to step up and think about that. I mean, this is the approach I take with business. And again, I'm a businessman. I'm not a coach. So my thought is a little different than most coaches. But you have to think, you have to create profit because you have to pay your bills. You have to keep the lights on and do something you love, which is important, but find a way to maximize the return for the time you spent and the energy you spent. Make the biggest impact for your clients, but also make the biggest impact for yourselves and for your families, which is you need to make the most amount of money you can in the right way. And this is a great way to think about that. I love it. I just think we have to end there. That was perfect. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I don't want to add anything to that. You nailed it. I, yeah. Yep. We're done. We're done here. So where do people find you, right? Tell people where they can check out the system and where they can find more information. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, You can find us at avidonhealth.com. So A-V-I-D-O-N health.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Clark. This was great. I'm excited to check it out. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. This podcast was brought to you by Primal Health Coach Institute. To learn more about how to become a successful health coach, get in touch with us by visiting primalhealthcoach.com forward slash call. Or if you're already a successful health coach, practitioner, influencer, or thought leader with a thriving business and an interesting story, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with us at hello at primalhealthcoach.com and let us know why we need to interview you for Health Coach Radio. Thanks for listening.